What's going on? Hot heads, it's Jova Hut from Jova's Palace. Wah, wah, wah. Here with another What's in the Box action figure unboxing slash review. Um, if you have not been here before, this is the way that Jova's Palace works. Um, we stream on Whatnot multiple nights a week on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 11.30 p.m. Eastern when we sell some stuff. If our uh, customers allow us to, we open some of the figures and review them before we ship them off. So thank you, Avi, for allowing us to review some of your figures before we ship them. And then we post those reviews on YouTube so that everybody can uh, get a good look at the figures, make informed purchasing decisions going forward. And all that. Uh, so give us a follow at Jova's Palace on Instagram, on whatnot. Um, obviously on YouTube. You're probably already on YouTube if you're watching this. Um, on Twitch, all the other social media sites, Facebooks. We have a Facebook group and all that stuff. If you're after any figures, um, we have over 600 items available. So feel free to shoot me a DM on any of our socials or come see us um, on the whatnot app for when we do some streams. All right. So we have a bunch of figures we need to get through today. We have one, two, three, four, five, six figures we're going to go through. So we're going to start with the Star Wars Vintage Collection items. So we're going to lead things off with the HK87 Assassin Droid. We did do the Black Series version of this on a previous review. So feel free to check out our YouTube and you can find that. Um but definitely interested in the vintage collection version. So let's get a look at this guy. And once again, there's the card. Here's the back of the card, some of the other figures from the wave. We're going to be doing another figure from this wave um, on this review as well. But we'll take a look at the HK and then we'll compare it to the other figure in the wave that we're reviewing. So there's the HK and it is HK87. I mean, yeah, listen to that. Listen to that ASMR right there. Yeah. That's what you're after right there. All right, and then there's a good look at him. He does have a soft goods cloak, which is very nice. There's the body. I could maybe do with a little black paint. How does the picture say? He doesn't have black paint in the picture, so his visor is red in the picture. So it actually doesn't need black paint there. So overall matching, uh, at least the picture that they showed us. Here's the back. Uh, let's take a look at some of his accessories. And then we'll do a brief overview of articulation. And then we'll move on to the other vintage collection figure. We have a lot of figures to get through, so I don't want to dwell too much on any one specific one. Definitely not the vintage collection ones, just because they, um, the articulation is going to be pretty much the same. Here's the staff. Pretty cool. Uh, and then here's his blaster. I assume we've seen this blaster before somewhere. Go. There that is. All right, let's take a look at him and some of his articulation. So, okay on the look up, look down, left, right, shoulder out. This shoulder pad, it's very um, flexible. Like This is a separate piece here, so it does kind of get out of the way. I wouldn't push too much because you might get some stressing on that. And eventually it'll break, but they—they're not hindering his um, his range of motion. Uh, and yeah, I think it does come with more accessories than the Black Series one. Let's see. His elbow that way. There you go. There's his elbow. All right. So there's his elbow. Right there. I feel like we don't have enough light over here. Let me get some extra light in here. Is that is that better? All 
All right, so then the wrists are gonna turn like that, buckle that way. Waist does have a waist. It has an upper chest. There's an upper chest here. And a little bit of a swivel going on there. And then it has the lower waist cut right there. All oh, this lighting is so much better now. Um, not too much with the splits. Obviously, the way that that is molded, you're not going to be able to go too far with those. But I don't see this guy doing a split anytime soon. He does have an upper upper thigh cut, though, which is interesting. And he's got this knee boy right here. And then the ankle. And a little bit of pivot there, too. All right, let's see how easy it is to get him into a cool pose. Um, I'm going to... He does not have a holster for his blaster. Just want to point that out. So maybe we'll do both weapons at the same time. Both weapons at the same time. And do a little loose there. But he can hold it. And then give him a blaster on this side. Let me get it in there. Got this hand open. Papa, don't preach. Sorry, one second. <laughs> it's been a couple weeks since I did a review, so I gotta recalibrate being on camera and doing this at the same time. So there we go. Oh my god. Killing myself here. There we go. This is why we need the ability to edit these videos, because they tend to go on a little too long because I'm too busy dicking around. All right. There we go. See, can we get him in a standing pose? Oof, that hand doesn't... This staff does not want to stay in this hand. There he is. All right, we got there. There he is standing, holding his staff. Got the blaster ready, ready to track down some Jedis. All right, that's cool. All right, we'll slide him back here for now. We'll move on to our next vintage collection figure, who is... Morgan Elsbeth. I'm actually excited for this because her soft goods look pretty nice. Face sculpt is decent. She does look a little tired there. A little tired. But aren't we all? Um, all right, so here's Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. So we do have the Black Series Morgan Elsbeth if anybody is after her. But this is our last one of these. But if you guys have requests for anything, feel free to either throw it in the chat or shoot me a DM. Um, that's a word. She has no accessories, by the way. So we do not have an accessory portion of this. But there she is up close. There's a better look at her. See, there we go. The lighting like this is so much better. A um, little bit of paint rub here. Or they missed some paint, like some fleshy paint is down there. That's a thing. Here's the shoulders. There's an elbow for you. There we go. Wrist, she's got her fingerless gloves. The little Tito Jackson gloves, ready to go. Some splits. She does have a waist here, or a waist here. Yeah, same thing as the other one. Her articulation is basically the same as the other guy. But let's take a better look, a closer look at this soft goods skirt she has it's pretty nice nice like maroon and black pattern to it i do wish that we would have gotten some extra accessories with her though like give me 
I mean, one of the things would be a spoiler, but give me like alternate hands or, or something, you know? I don't know. I guess they couldn't think of anything to give her, but there's there's things that you could give her. He's ma magic hands, magic man. Like, is she literally, how can you do her doing magic? Can you do it like up here and like that? Maybe one of these. Oh, I'm doing my. Ooh, I'm doing magic. I'm doing magic. Yeah, she gets a cool weapon at the end, but they didn't know about that because you know Black Series team does, uh, but our Star Wars Hasbro team doesn't do any actual research on anything. Um, all right, so those are your two vintage collection figures. There's them next to each other. They're on the same team. Uh, so that is two that you would have in the display together for sure. Yeah, the Beskar Spear would have been a good one. I honestly am tempted, why don't we do this? Why don't we give her the spear? He's got the gun. And we'll give him his spear. We'll just pretend that this is a Beskar Spear. How's that sound? And then that'll... Now I can get a little, uh, get a little crazy with it. Get her into an actual good pose where she's doing some. You know, she is related to Bruce Lee. Bruce Leroy. Can get her going and doing something cool here. Make this review worth watching. Well, let me just get her hand going here. Like that. You know, like. Can we get her leaning forward enough that she can actually hold this pose, though? Can we get her feet moving? Bounce her out. Oh, whatever. We'll put her like that for now. Can't really get her to stand like that, but... That's better, though. Make the airplane noise. Uh, we're at uh, 50,000 feet right now. We're arriving at about uh, five hours. We're making pretty good time here. I think we're going to hit a jet stream. Just, uh, keep an eye out for some turbulence over there. And, uh, uh, thank you for flying with us. That's the airplane noise you wanted, right? That's uh, There you go. There's a, That's just getting to see. This is what happens. This is what accessories do, guys. Just get, give me a minute here. Before we move on, I know I'm not, I literally said we're not going to dwell on anything specifically for too long, but let me just, let me just hop on my soapbox for a minute here. Now, I understand that there is only so much buzzer to give us accessories. Um, thank you for flying over there, Alex. Um, but you see the inspiration that just me saying like, oh, you know what? Somebody threw Baskar Spear in the chat, reminded me of it because, you know, how would I mean, we remember what they're supposed to have, but I guess Hasbro doesn't. Um, just knowing that we have this extra spear here and that I can use this spear here, that triggered in my brain a little, a little inspiration, a little imagination to be like, oh yeah, that now I remember all the like cool. You know, she's fucking Bruce Lee's, like, niece or something like that. You know, like, she was doing really awesome choreography throughout the entire Ahsoka series. And when we saw her in Mandalorian, I believe. Um, so now I got a spear in her hand. Now I want to do a wide stance and have her, you know, doing something a little bit cooler here, you know? So I would say if you're going to put her in the stance, you probably need a base for her like a little base stand but that's fine i mean i'm sure you guys got them laying around. i'm sure there's one laying around here but 
you know, we're in the middle of a review, so I'm not going to go run and try to find one. But see that how that was a little inspiration and that that triggered something. So never us underestimate um, the other guy's greed. No, never underestimate a good set of accessories because that'll those will inform how you're going to pose something and and the different situations you want to get different figures in. So there you go. We can see how that worked out right there. All right, so. The next one, I guess we're going to save that guy for last. So why don't we move on? We're going to do a couple G.I. Joes in a row, and then we have a, a big bopper at the end here. Um, all right, so the, now we're going to – this is three and three-quarter inch scale vintage collection. Those are our two vintage collection figures. We're going to move on to six-inch scale now, all right? So – and it's going to be G.I. Joe. So G.I. Joe classified, best main line action figure line going right now um at least in my opinion but i feel like in many people's opinions um so we can see right now look at the back of the box and we always like to use this as a reference so we know how many accessories we're going to get out of this i also want to see how bright is this green going to be um compared to the box but he's got a couple nunchucks he's got a knife he's got a couple swords and he's got some extra claws. I don't know what the actual name for those is. Um, those are the claws you put on your hands, though, right? Like um, the guy in Street Fighter. Vega in Street Fighter. All right. Oh, let's keep the box handy. As you can see in the background, we have some of our previous we reviewed figures, so feel free to check those out on YouTube. We'll try to use those as background so people know the other items and stuff we have available. Here's his crate. Here's him. Here is him. Let's take a look at the paint first. So yeah, it seems to... I The back of the box seems a little bit... No, it's pretty spot on. All right, so I, I like the way, the way that green looks. That definitely looks good on him. Nice sculpt. This is gonna be cool. I'm happy we're getting some more some more ninjas in this line. All right, let's get his accessories out. Take a look at those, and then we'll move on to the figure. Keep his box handy for all of our accessories. All right, here's our little baggie. Okay, so first things first, we got these little Wolverine-like claws, which I don't remember what they're called, but yeah, those, let's go this way and get a little extra light on those for you guys. Not one to focus. There we go. Let's give a look at theirs. Claws. So it's all one color, but I think I would want it that way. I don't know if I would want them all like bright and stuff. I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to. Clearly, they have the option to. Here's the nunchucks. These are maybe going to be a little troublesome. I saw some people were just kind of putting drilling into these and doing like bendy wires. Oh boy, drilling into these and doing bendy wires. Um. Or maybe there's like a Mikey Michelangelo one that you can use. Sorry, the focus on this is terrible today. There we go. Here's a good look at the nunchucks. Um, this I guess is for the back of his head. And then here's his little knife. I am killing, getting killed by focus today. All right, let's just move on to the sword. And there's the sword. Uh, I definitely like the metallic look on the sword. I like those little spikes on the back. Here's the hilt. There you go. 
And different degrees of green here. Definitely nice detailing on that. They could have just mailed it in and did one solid color on that, so that's good. All right, those are all those accessories. Put those off to the side for now. All right, let's take a look at Mr. Nunchaku. Here's that box. We can add that to the wall of fame back here. You know, it needs to be like inverted and stuff, but we'll put it back there for now. I'll invert it. You'll see it in the next video. Um, all right, and here is Nunchuck. Got a lot of light on him. Loving the shoulder pads. Really cool shoulder pads. He's got a little grenade there. He's got a hilt for his knife. Here's a closer look at that face. Good looking face. Interesting that his eyebrows... Or is that a cut? Huh. His eyebrows kind of like change color at the end. It's weird. All right, there's that green, so you get a good look at uh, the green. Does the headgear come off? No. Well, I mean, no. I think it's glued on. I think it's a separate piece, but it's glued on. My headgear. I obviously don't want to force it because this is obvious figure. Oh, uh, yeah, and there's the back. There's the culo. Here's the boots. Always like to look at the boots. It's got the little footy footy foot things going on there. All right, let's take a look at uh, some articulation on him now. See what we can get away with him. What's going on the Saudi shelf? Okay, so we have these shoulder pads. They do bend, but they're a little bit in the way. I would say that they're a little bit in the way there. So they're preventing a little bit of things from happening. All right, here's our elbow. So it's not really a, where is it stuck? Hold on, let me get that out. Let me unlock that elbow. Hold on. You know, I told myself I was going to have my heat gun available for these things going forward, but best laid plans. All right, here's that elbow doing its double elbow action. I think we could push that a little bit further, but I don't want to. Um, bicep swivel. There is a butterfly joint here. You just got to kind of get to it. You can see it on the other side a little bit more. Um, wrist, just wrist here. And it has the side wrist for that one. And then on this side, same side wrist? Yeah, it's doing the vertical wrist for both hands. All right, here's the... Obviously, you can't really look up too much because this hood is in the way. Here's your look down. Good look down. Um, here's your waist. There we go. He definitely needs a little bit of heating up, but there you go. There's a nice roll back. See, it makes up for it, not being able to look up too much. It looks a little bit weird when you do all that, but when you get him like this, it's not too bad. And then here's your bend forward. So really good uh, waist stuff going on there. There's a little bit of hindrance going on here, I guess, with the belt, but you can slide that out of the way and get your waist going. We got a drop down hips. Over here. We do not have Raiden. There's that. Uh, swivel. Knee. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks, Marley. <laughs> what Raiden are you even looking for? 
Marley and me. Yeah, I'm saying, um, like, what line? Like, what action figure line? Are you looking for, like, a six-inch scale one from McFarlane? You're looking for a three-and-three-quarter-inch G.I. Joe one? The more I interact with these, I really feel like... I mean, I don't have any of them, but just want to know. You really need to be warmed up to get to these knees. All right, well, this does have a double joint, but like I said, I'd rather warm it up than get into this and break out these figures, so... We're going to leave that for now. Uh, swivel right here, and then ankles, ankle there. Gotcha, the G.I. Joe riding. I, I don't have one in stock at the moment. Um, if you want to shoot me a DM and remind me, if I see one, I'll definitely let you know for sure. Keep, keep an eye out. All right, so there's pretty much the articulation on that. Like I said, these are very stiff here. So they're going to need to be warmed up. Like the second joint below his knee is very stiff, and I just don't want to crack it. So just going to leave that for now. Um, so a little bit coming out of the package where he has some articulation issues, but nothing that a little heat won't fix. You just got to be able to crack it, and then, and then you'll be good to go. Um, let's get some accessories on him. And then we'll move on to our next figure. I mean, listen, we've seen guys hold... Well, first, he's called nunchucks. So let's try the nunchucks. So the first thing I'll say about the nunchuck is that it's definitely too... I mean, it's not that it's stiff. It's just that it needs to... That actually isn't bad. If you get it hooked too... A little wrist there, so that's one way to do it. And then I always like to do the behind the hand nunchuck type deal. That like other alternate method of doing it. So we got that, we got that. We can get him into like a sideways stance. Get him moving there. So that's like a nunchuck stance. I definitely think that I would upgrade these nunchucks. Even if you have to customize them. Um, or maybe if you had them holstered for a while. He can holster. Yeah, so let's see. if we, He does have holsters back here. We didn't cover that. He has holsters back here for the nunchucks. So maybe if you want to get them holstered for a while. This isn't even like really that. Hold on. Let's try to get one of these nunchucks into its holster. Bend them forward. Oh boy. Seems like it's like too big for the whole. Oh, I guess you can get it in there. It takes a little bit of effort, though. There you go. I mean, I guess if it's tight like that, it'll be easier to um for them to not fall out. You get in there. Jesus, it's a lot of effort. There we go. All right, once they're in there, they're good. That's one side. Do the other side. Do the thing. I mean, I want to get at these claws. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm interested in. This fucking belt is so tight with this.
Oof. You know what I'm gonna do? Give me the. There we go. Let's stretch him a little bit with that. Can get him a little stretch with the sword, just to open him up a little bit. Hopefully that will help. Ugh. There we go. You gotta like twist it. You gotta like twist it while you try to get it in there. Now twist it. Is it is it in yet? My god. There we go. There we go. Those are holstered. Um, knife can go up here. Got a little holster for his knife. That direction, yep, so just push it in. That's good. Um, I Guess his swords can go at his sides. Yeah, okay, that's cool. And we gotta put the back of his little bandana thing on too. Yeah, there you go. This belt's doing a lot of work here. I get that belt back in place. All right, now I want to see these claws. Um, claws, he's going to hold them, so we have to open up his hand a little bit. And then slide them around. There you go, that was easy. There you go, that's a cool one. That looks dope as fuck. Get his little thing on the back. It's this is like kind of weird. <laughs> that slid right in. There you go. Now we're talking. How cool that looks. I do like the looking through them type pose. Like that. Time to rake the leaves. All right, that's cool. So I give you the nunchuck version of him, and then the here's the. Uh, I want to say shuriken, but it's not a shuriken, right? Like shuriken is what Raph has. Whatever it is, what it is. The uh, claw, claw McThing. I'm here to rake all your ears and be a ninja about it. All right, so there's Nunchuck. Very cool. I like him. Um, a lot of accessories, a lot of cool accessories. Something's got to be done about the actual Nunchucks, though. They needed to put a slightly more effort into that one. All right, what do we got now? Um, all right, let's go to the exclusive nunchuck. Um, so he, there is a 
O-ring version of him. Was it during the Ninja releases, or was he part of a different wave, though? Because the Ninja stuff was in, like, the 90s, right? Like, one was, uh, like, Judo and all them come out. It, it was an O-ring. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, this is Shadow Tracker. Shadow Tracker. This is an exciting one. If you like Predators, then this is kind of the vibe we got going on here with Shadow Tracker. Right out of the box. Kind of forward here. That's sick. Fucking stand. Look at that. That's badass. Oh, he's got a lot going on with this sculpt. That's sick. Look at his shoulder. He's like shoulder pad. So this was a Walmart exclusive. We do have one more of these in stock, guys. Just so everybody is aware of what is available and what is not. So quick review of uh, what accessories we're supposed to be getting with him. So he's going to have three masks. One of them is already on him. He has a Bowie knife. Um, he has a bow, which I guess an extra, there's a little extra piece there. Uh, he's got a hatchet and he's got arrows and an arrow bag. All right, there's accessories out here. Okay, so we'll take a look at the alternate masks first. There we go. There's our alternate masks. So you got the full skull mask, and you got the translucent neon green mask, which is really cool. But this mask that he's wearing is pretty dope already. Right? There's all three masks together. Um, all right, here is the bow. Pretty cool bow, very interesting details, a lot of nuts and bolts and whatnots on there. And then there's this extra little piece that goes on here. Oh, other way. There we go. So don't get confused here because this piece does have a hole here. But it's you got to like figure out which side fits. This, I assume, is so that it can support um, uh, any like blast effects you want to use with it. Here's an arrow next to the bow individual arrow. It's got like interesting tip here. Okay, cool arrow tip. It's a little extra going on there. Here's the arrow bag, which has extra storage pieces for other things. Yeah, compound bow. There you go. Uh, this is the hatchet. And then drop it. The hilt. And then this is the Bowie knife. The Bowie knife might be my favorite thing here, to be honest. This is the Bowie knife. All right, let's get him out here and mess around with him. David, is that David Bowie's knife? <laughs> I 
Is that the star man's knife? Bow is in space. Okay, here's a closer look at Spirit Tracker. Ooh, he's got his little necklace too and everything. Hold on, let me get them all situated before I put them on screen here. Right, there's a really good look at that head sculpt. He's got earrings too. He's got like a gauge earring. Cool dreads. Very basic vest, but that's okay. He's got a lot of details going on otherwise. This is the necklace. It's got like a vulture head on it. Which is cool. Here's that shoulder pad. Which is like, what, what animals is he killing for these? Like, is that a gorilla head? I mean, not a gorilla head, like a chimp head? Or, or like a tiger? Is it a tiger skull? A jaguar skull? I don't know. He's got, he's got, he's veined up too. Look how jacked this dude is. Interesting neon green randomly on the back. A poodle. Uh, there's the hair. More neon green as we work our way down. This like neon green rope. Where, where do you get a rope like this? Who's selling a neon green version of this type of rope? Like I can understand if it was like a nylon rope or like something like that. But who's got a neon green rope like this? Uh, and then we got like some claws, which is cool. A lot of cool detail. And we might, we might have a candidate. And here's a. This is like a dark cheetah print. Here. They're like, they're like black cheetahs. Uh, shin pads, knee pads. Oh no, shin. Sorry. Uh, I don't know. Whatever that is. These are the shin pads. And then look at those look at those fucking shoes. Look at that. Look at those neon green shoes. Kick you in the face, glow in the dark style. That's the bottom of the boots. He's he is part of the Cheetah Girls. He was in the Cheetah Girls. The vest is a separate piece. You can take this vest off, I assume. Or like cut it off. There's a break here. Yeah, that's like the... It might. It might be glued, though. Like I said, I just don't like to mess around. But you could definitely pull that off, get this dude shirtless, and see what happens. <laughs> and then this... Even this piece overhangs. So it's probably like a... Maybe it's the roadblock, the heavy artillery roadblock. Could be. Because that guy, I think, was just wearing a vest, right, that you could take off. All right, what do we want to do with him? All right, let's 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 do some uh, face swaps first. Let's see. So this piece, okay. So this mask, and then we're gonna, we have to overlay the other masks. So let's go with this mask first. I definitely want to see how well this stays on here. Oh, yeah, you got to put effort into taking that off. So that's nice. This is not like a Darth Vader situation we have going on here. This mask is not going to come off unless you want to pull it off. And I don't even think that, like, articulating, like, I'm bending his head down, and it didn't even fully come off. It pushed it a little bit, but it definitely will take effort. And then let's go with the neon green mask. Now this one, this one does not sit as well on there. This one you might have to feed. No, you can't even feed it under his hair. Sorry, you guys are off screen with this. Definitely looks dope though. But it'll... Okay, it didn't come off like that. But once again, when you articulate down, that's when you start to lose it. 
But once you get it on there, it's decent. Mm, it's, it's not th this one. This one is a harder plastic, so it's not forming as much to the mask. Like it wants to come off. Definitely wants to come off. This one is a is a more malleable thing, and I think it more forms to his face. Whereas this one is a is a little bit harder of a plastic, since it's like the neon green translucent one. So it definitely needs to be like in a specific angle for it to stay on. All right, there you go. All right, let's. Uh, well, we got to do articulation, so let's do some articulation. All right, so here's looking up is obviously going to get hindered by his awesome hair. Here's your look down. But like I said, when you do the look down, it's going to knock your mask option off. This shoulder, this is a separate piece. So this is not getting hindered at all by this. Here's your elbow. We got the upper bicep. There we go. That really popped into place right there. There's your double elbow. Nothing wrist here. Um, and he's got the, we said vertical for the vertical. He got the jerk off wrists. There you go. We'll call him that from now on. Um, obviously, this big vest is getting in the way of us using that, any of the upper things. But you can still, we can get a little belly there. It just, it's not going to hold as much when you go back. Oh, it held a little bit. And you can bend forward. Um, and you can do the waist swivel as well. Mm. All right. Uh, drop down hips. Upper thigh. Yes. Upper thigh is not hindered by this little pad here. So that's good. He's got a holster right there. Knee. There we go. There's your knee. Double knee. Shin. Oh, the shin works still, even with this shin guard. Uh, and then there's your ankles. His hips do not lie. Same restaurant to pay Joe has for home. What does that even mean? Okay, so there he is. All right, let's try to mess around with some accessories now. Um, well, let's see. What can we holster first? So he has the back thing here, which that actually slides in pretty well. Sometimes I have an issue with these, but that slides in pretty well. There's a little bit of a gap there, though. So we could probably push it a little bit further, but it's not... It's not getting too screwed up. There's a little bit of a gap, but that's fine. They need to fix those pegs. That's that's one of the things that should be on their agenda. You can put the extra arrow in here. Yes. I don't know if it goes all the way down, though. It can. Yeah, it goes all the way down. Extra arrow does go all the way down. So you can see it like that. I could push it further, but I want, I know I'm gonna take it out in a second. So um his bow is gonna be able to clip on here somewhere. Let's see, what else do we have? Just so I know what I'm keeping track of. We have the hatchet. The bowie knife. His masks. It'd be cool if you could store his masks. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that you could put just put the this on. No, I wouldn't say there by the handle, I guess. That's not the. This is like a pretty hard piece here, too. By the way, who are these guys ambushing? A vamp would be a great display. Maybe his hatchet is supposed to go there. I want to take this piece off and mess with it like this. All 
I don't know. I don't know if that's where that's supposed to go. The picture doesn't help. The clamp is for his extra dreads. I just want to know if I can get this clip on here. I mean, there's very thin things that you could do it with. I mean, I guess if you wanted to just have it chill like that, you could. There's probably a more proper way to do it. But that looks fine. Right? And then you can get... He also has extra stuff over here. So what did he have? He had this one was like originally up here. Which I assume is supposed to be for the Bowie knife, right? I don't know. He's a little confusing with where to put accessories on him. But I guess if you wanted to slide the Bowie knife in there, you could. And then he also has the hatchet. Is there another slot? I mean, it's got to be the backpack slot, right? Interesting. <laughs> he definitely eats turtle soup. All right. That's fine. I do want to try to get the hatchet in here and see what it looks like. Maybe if we slide it to the side a little bit more. Now this has these stupid Cyclops loops that will, they're going to slide down on you. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So it's just supposed to be like notch in here, here. Oh, there's a side notch too. It's just weird because it's like there's all these different areas to put storage for stuff. But it's a little confusing about where you're supposed to store what. I mean, this Bowie knife seems to fit in there very nicely. The hatchet is not going to fit down here. Unless if you hang it maybe from this. So then I would say that the hatchet is supposed to go here. And we'll spin it that way just to get it like going like that. Then we could go with, I mean, this is just not really a spot for this. Unless if you wanted to take this and slide it in there. Oh, a little confusing. All right, let's get him like that and let's do a little bow pose. He's also got a, he's got a side. Oh, yeah, we were talking about that side holster already. So it's like he has, like, so many areas to holster stuff that it gets a little confusing about how to and where to holster things. Jesus. And then there goes his hair, knocking that off. All right. I will say the one thing. I mean, it is what it is. We got to figure him out and get him doing different things. The one thing that is slightly annoying me is the necklace, just because the hair, the hair and the necklace combination is kind of annoying just because they are getting in each other's way a lot. But let's give him his bow. Get in there, thumb. There you want it. There we go. That 
That's pretty nice that you can wind that up like that. So let's give me my extra bow now. I'm trying to feed the bow through. I gotta tell you, I do not enjoy messing around with bow and arrows on any figures. Let's just have him drawing it. This has to be so frustrating for anybody watching. Alright, whatever. That's fine. I'm not going to spend all day trying to get his bow and arrow to work. Let's go with the neon green. So there's some annoying things, but overall, very cool figure. Awesome sculpt, well executed. There's just a couple things, like that mask falling off there. I just don't like bows and arrows. I don't have any vintage TMNT or Motu. We have Motu Revelations. Um, and we have some retro re-releases of TMNT, and we have NECA at TMNT. Those are the items we have available for those IPs that you mentioned. Oh, there you go. There's a standing bow. So, yeah, oh, I didn't even talk about the bones on the side of his wrist. Look at that. That's cool. I just noticed those. So there you go. There's your little predator man, your shadow tracker. Um, oh, you're repainting that green mask. Are you going to repaint the green mask? Why that's like the cooler looking one. That's the one that I wouldn't repaint. This is the one that'll fit on his body better. And I'm wondering if you can just pop this on his shoulder too. There you go. You pop it on his shoulder too. Now he's got skulls on both shoulders. Maybe a little putty to keep that in place, but for the most part, good stuff. All right, there you go. Well, there's Spirit Tracker. All right, we got two more figures to get through, so let's let's keep it moving here. Uh, this is going to be a two-pack. This is one of the newer items that has been released over the last couple weeks. And uh, this will, like, basically close out the Joe year. I think Metalhead is on the, on the way, too. So it's going to be Mutt and Junkyard. Dual pack. So this will be a fun one. And also, how glorious is it that the window boxes, boxes are back? Yes. Mutt is the man and Junkyard is the dog. Spirit Tracker background piece. What happened to that? Do you not have one? Oh no, it's here. Here's the Spirit Packer uh, Tracker background piece, by the way, and that'll just slide right back here for now. So those are two, two of our bounties for the night. All right, uh, I'd say Doggo first, right? Let's see. Uh, maybe we'll do Doggo last. But I assume that we don't need to do a ton of articulation with him. All right, here's a good look at Mutt. Let's 
the real angry Tom Selleck. Five o'clock shadow. Cool. A little bit of a paint mist there. I think a little nail polish remover could probably clean that up. Yeah, he's got chest hair. What a ridiculous way to do the chest hair. That looks very pubic right there. <laughs> uh, and then there's the rest of the head. Red shoulder straps. He's got his little badge there. Some extra bullets. Loving the vest. Vest looks really good. Extra pockets. Arm hair. His nice puby arm hair. There you go. Um, nice wrist pad. I like the wrist pads. I like how he's like offset, like some of this over there, some of this over there, like different things happening. He's got a little uh, gas grenade, I guess, over there. And the boots, as always, love those boots. I would wear these boots. These are nice boots. I give that 10 toes out of 10, those boots. Okay, we'll fix them later. All right, so there he is. Um, shoulder. Woose over there. Pretty loose. Um, jerk off wrist. This, this piece is a separate piece here. So you could, ooh. you could cut that off if you wanted to or get it off somehow. This is a separate piece. Legs, you know, we don't need to go through all this. There you go, there's a knee. Look up, look down, waist, uh, upper thigh, we did the knees, shin, ankles. So everything we've come to expect from G.I. Joe classified figures is much taller than Shadow Tracker. Well, we had Shadow Tracker in a different pose. So let's get him taller. Shadow Tracker is taller. Even with the head tilt, he is still taller. Shadow Tracker is taller. Not by a ton. But it's the hair. You know what it is? It's the hair. We'll do comparisons to everybody at the end, too. Once we get through all our classifieds. Uh, yeah, so those are all your articulation and stuff. It just really nice uh, head sculpt. Definitely like it. Chest hair and arm pubic hair looks a little weird. Uh, and then just all his, like, gadgets and whatnots are really cool. Um, he does have a helmet. Here's the helmet. Pop that on him. Interesting weathering on this helmet. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely think that that Shadow Tracker is the heavy artillery robot. Um, he has extra gloves and stuff. He's got a knife here. <laughs> Joes take a lot of time to review because they give you a lot of accessories. I'm not complaining about it. It just takes a minute. This knife is kind of a pain in the ass to get out of there, but here's the knife. It's a pretty basic knife. See where we holster this right here. Goes right there. We got all kinds of guns here. Uh, 
nightstick. I already missed the weapon crates. show you guys all this in just a second. I just want to get everything out of this package first. It's got a lot of hands. Jesus. I'm doing you a service on this one, Avi. Getting the accessories out of this fucking thing are a pain in the ass. There. In the interest of time, here's the rest of the hands. I'm not going to go crazy ripping all those hands out right now. So you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, six extra hands, and then there's two in there. Here's a nightstick. It's not even that. It's like it's too bendy. Here's the nightstick. Here's his AR. Really like the green handle. I got this little handgun. And then he's got all these. I guess one of these is supposed to be like a muzzle. And then there's two other ones. Which I guess these are goggles here. I just don't... Oh yeah, because they both wear goggles. Yeah, that's what it is. They both can wear goggles. Alright. Let's move on to the doggo. Yeah, but I'm surprised there's no leash. Isn't there usually a leash? That's the star of the show. Here's Junkyard. This is the angry head sculpt. His mouth does not articulate. Yeah, see, this is here. So I guess he's supposed to just, like, lean down and hold him, but it is weird that there's not a leash. All right, articulation on this. Um, head looking up. There is a little gapage there, but you're going to have him down here, so you're not really going to see that. Uh, head looking down. Oh, pops off, but... That's a feature that's expected. So the leash gets in the way of a little bit of the articulation there. Uh, there is neck articulation here, though. So if you want to have him going downward or like attacking somebody like that, you can use that articulation to make that happen. This is obviously going to go front and back. There's a little bit of side to side movement on the on the four on the front legs. There's his like there. Don't want to push it too much. You can push that a little bit further if you wanted to. And then it's got paw, paw articulation. Gotta love the hey, paw articulation, hey. Uh, the, he has a little bit of a waist going on here right in front of the hind legs. Um, don't think that, I think this is one solid block here. 
Uh, then there's the back legs, pretty much this, very similar to the front. And then the back leg. And then he has he does have little paw swivels in the back. Oh, in the front, too. So there's an extra little bit of articulation there as well. All right, cool. Let's get the other head sculpt on him. See the happy version of the boy. That was a nice, satisfying pop. Here's the happy version of the boy. I don't know how how would you how would you guys prefer to to display him the angry or the or the slobbery happier one. Angry, you're going angry. This looks like me when I was setting up my computer this week. I was trying to figure out how that works. All right, let's switch back to angry. Easy swap, though, isn't it? The hardest part is lining up this little peg. Definitely got to watch his collar, though. The collar can get in the way for sure. <laughs> All right, let's get him standing. There you go. So we did the panther a while back. It's very similar to the panther. The panther was bigger, so it had a little bit of more articulation. And that was also an exclusive. Um, like a Pulsecon exclusive. The Dungeons and Dragons uh, Guinevere. All right, now how do we get these? Let's try the muzzle. Is it supposed to go on him? I think it's supposed to go on, on, on the guy. Yeah, it does go on the guy. Yeah, my bad. Okay, so I think what we're dealing with is that all that stuff goes on Mutt. All right, so let's get his the muscle on Mutt, which is hilarious. I forgot about that. Um, can we slide this down his head, or do we have to do it the other way? You just got to work it down. The ear is getting in the way. Just get it. The big thing is to keep it even on your way down because then that creates more space for you to do what you need to do here. And then there that is. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Raiders of the Lost Ark. All right, and then we got the goggles. Which, are these the right goggles? Oh, you know what? It is with the goggles. The goggles are supposed to go... I think there's a version of the goggles that go just on him. Yeah, here we go. This is how this works. There's a version of the goggles that go just right on him. Sorry, guys. We're losing our... So there's him with the muzzle and the goggles. And then there's another set of goggles that when you have his helmet on him. I see you guys. Welcome to the channel, guys. How's everybody doing? We're just reviewing uh, some figures right now. So we did just a quick review for anybody that just came in. If you guys want to see these guys a little bit more in person. Nunchuck we reviewed. Which we do have an extra nunchuck. Uh, available if anybody needs him. We did Shadow Tracker. Let me put his mask back on. We just had a raid for anybody on YouTube. 
shadow tracker. And then we learned that you can put the um, other skull on his alternate shoulder oh, if it wants to stay. Come on. Maybe pop his arm up a little bit. Yeah, so then you can kind of go with them like that and then have both shoulders. Because uh, that's what we do. We get new figures expediently and into our collector's hands so that they can enjoy them. Um, and then this is Mutt. And then this is Junkyard here. All right, so finishing this off, let's get him... Uh, he doesn't have a way to holster his rifle. I want his nightstick. That's what I want out of him. I want him to have his nightstick. So we got him with his nightstick. Um, he can holster his sidearm. And then I guess if we wanted to use... He doesn't have a backpack. That's the thing. So he doesn't really have a way to holster this gun. But here's the combo together. Let's get him like, like that. And then just hover that hand there. That's a pretty good way to display them. There's our boys right there. It's a nice little combo. Okay, so uh, quick comparison. Uh, we did our height comparisons already, so I'm not too worried about that. But let's just line all three of these guys up together. You guys can see them all together. Oh, and then this is the alternate head sculpt for, for Junkyard, if anybody wanted to see it. It's like a little bit closer of a look at it. And we do have another one of those sets as well. So all three of the G.I. Joe Classifieds that we're reviewing right now, we do still have in stock. So if anybody's interested in any of those, let me know. Okay. Need to spend a little bit more time on Nunchuck's articulation here. Get him in a position where he'll just stand normally. There we go. Go and him for a little bit. Okay, so there's your Joe's, your GI Joe classifieds for the night that we reviewed. We do have one more figure. It is not a GI Joe figure. Hold on, I just want to find a skull that fell on the ground. There it is. Ugh. But it is a dope-ass figure. We saved it for last. So let's slide these guys back. Oh, okay. He was relying on him to stay up, so that's why that happens. There you go. Put his goggles back on. Oops. Oh, other way. Sorry. Let's get her standing again. for a big bopper that's going to come in here to finish off the stream. Fix his leg so it looks better. Okay. All right, so there's your G.I. Joe Classifieds for the night. Um, we do have one more figure, though. And this is a cool one. This has been a long time coming for a lot of people. Uh, so, 
something to definitely be excited about. We're switching gears a little bit to finish things off. I know. I mean, sometimes you just got to give it. I don't like using stands, but sometimes you just got to give it up and use stands. Um, and it is going to be the Marvel Legends Spider-Man 2 Doc Ock. That'll be the final figure that we review tonight. So this will be fun. Um, I kind of wish I had a Spidey for this, but that's all right. We can just use the other figures that we have in front of us. <clears throat> all right, Doc Ock time. And we can't forget about these extra hands. Avi, don't let, don't let me forget about the extra hands for your mutton junkyard. Uh, okay, so he, this one, just because this is what we always do, he's going to have uh, claws and hands. Those will basically be the extra options. <clears throat> Let's fix our music. Anybody that's opening this, there are extra bags underneath the cardboard. So I assume that these are going to be some of our extra accessories. <clears throat> Interesting way to do it. Yeah, those are his extra claw hands. Just be careful you don't leave anything in that package before you throw it out. So this is the stuff that's at the bottom there. So I assume it's going to be, yeah, this claw hand. That claw hand. So I guess it's the claws that have articulation. I don't even really know. Okay, I'll take a look at some of these claws first. Well, here's the extra hands. Then he has like a stationary claw that does not have any articulation. An open one that is similar to that. This one is the one that was at the bottom of the box. This one does have the articulation. These can peg out. And then I guess we can just peg it back in. Yeah, see if you see here. You see there. See if that has like a peg that you can just hook right in. Hold on, we got braced. There you go, and then it slides right in. When it articulates, it wants to come back out though. So just make sure it's in there all the way and don't like twist it when you articulate it. Um, yeah, so we got two sets of all three of those types that we just went over. So the claws. And then we got, ooh, okay. And we got Doc Ock right there. Dr. Otto Octavius. Goggles. Oh, they're like glasses. So they will come off? Mm, I don't want to force them. I'll just leave them. Uh, interesting little undershirt here. We got the zippers, the jacket. The jacket really makes this guy. Um... You got like an under jacket and then more jacket around it. He's got his little waist straps here that are bendy. 
his legs. Here is the back. They put little like tattered rips in the jacket on the back. So you get that detail right there. And then let's see how these legs are. So they are bendy wire. You can see the little seams there. And then... I guess it articulates there. You can move them a little bit in this part. I just wouldn't force it too much. You're really going to be using the bendy wire to do most of your thing. You just want to use that to get it like on its angle. I know he's very big, so. Let me try to create more separation for you guys to see what's going on here. Right, so if I straighten it out so we can see like his wingspan. That's how long the wingspan is. So very long. Um, all right, let's get some things on here. It seems like we're going to be able to do some type of get him to stand on these things. Because that's literally just all him on his hands. Okay, so I would say that the flat hands can be used as legs. See how easily these peg in as well. And then it doesn't seem like they're going to pop right out. It takes a little bit of effort to get those in there. And there's a lot of, they're longer, so definitely can do something there. Now this is all about weight I mean, I almost got him, and I've only been messing around with this for a couple of seconds. Oh, okay. Gotta find the right angle on it. Get his weight distribution going. Hold on, I wanna mess around with the most screen for a second just so I can try to get what I want out of him. Right, give me the articulating claws over here. I'm trying to decide whether the um, oh, lost the peg. Whether the flat claws or the hooked claws are best for being the base claws to help them stand. We can definitely mess with that. Oh, he fell, of course. I had him, too. Try, like, not as tall.
Not as tall, one in the front, one in the back. He just wants to lean forward. It's just the weight distribution more than anything else. There we go. So, I mean, obviously, you get him in a display. It'll be easier to get him to hold the pose. But the, just the fact that he can do that. Like, his legs are suspended off the ground. He has a base right there that he's hanging. So that's... That's really cool. And these are like heavy duty wires. So let's see if we start banging on the table. This is me banging on the table. See if he falls. So you, you get him in a certain thing. He's not going. He's pretty happy right there. So that's dope. Uh, the rest of the articulation, obviously, this is what we care about, right? We care about these bendy wire tentacles right here and the fact that you can do that. So that's really dope. And then we have those other hands as well. But there's Otto Octavius. I wonder, the only other thing that I would like to know is if I can get him holding somebody. Oh, geez. These definitely pop off pretty easily. So I don't know how, how well they're going to be able to support somebody's head. But that's where he's at, right there, chilling. Doesn't seem to want to go anywhere. So you just needed... So the adjustment that we made is we made... This is the angle that I ended up going with. So it's more of an L shape as opposed to going with a wider stance. I think if you're going with a wider stance, you're going to need to um you're going to need to either like find some way to get him to create some stability. He's always going to want to lean forward because that's where the figure is. I also offset the legs a little bit just to create some balance there. So there's your auto Octavia. So I like that. That's dope. I'm definitely going to, I mean, that's a figure that we've needed for a long time. So I really like that. All right. That's cool. Um, all right. How can we do this? Can we get everybody behind him for a little class photo here? Let's take some extra things out of here. All right, so those were the reviews of those guys. I'll do, uh, let me get everybody set up in a little class photo here, and then we can um, we can choose our rankings on these guys. Let me just move Java over a little bit. I can't have him. Now that he's there, he, he doesn't want to go anywhere. He's fine. He's fine with his lot in life. All right, give me mutt over here and junkyard down here. Interesting crop of figures to review tonight. Give me his helmet again. Oop, easy. Don't you knock over my Doc Ock. Uh, Morgan, not worried about that. Shadow Tracker. Come on, shoulder thing. Uh, 
Nanchaku, Morgan, and HK. This guy in the background, too. All right, cool. Oh, we need our. All right, there you go. All right, so. <clears throat> all right, our rankings here. Um, all right, and last, I'm going to put the H. Oh, wait, no. Uh, yeah, okay. And last, I'm going to put the HK droid. I do, it has nothing to do with him not being a good figure. He looks cool. He's really dope. Um, and he came with the accessories that we needed to make Morgan better. Now, this should be a toss-up between these two because the Morgan didn't come with any accessories, which was annoying. But putting his accessory on Morgan made Morgan better, so that's kind of just where we went up with. So nothing against the HK-87 droid. He's cool looking. He came with extra accessories for a vintage collection figure. Um, more accessories than the Black Series came with. But he's going to go to the bottom of the list just because we have awesome figures tonight. Right? I mean, I think that's the bottom line there. Then I'll go with Morgan. I do like Morgan. Her face sculpt looks a little bit like she's tired which is a little strange, and she doesn't come with any accessories. So that's, she might have leapfrogged the next figure on the list otherwise, but if not for those two issues. Then I'm going to go with Nunchuck. Now, Nunchuck is very well executed. He has a lot of awesome accessories. Love the paint, love the color. Um, his Nunchucks, which are his signature weapons, suck. So you're going to need to either upgrade those or use these claws instead. Uh, the claws are really dope. He comes with a lot of awesome accessories. He's got really cool swords and all that. I don't really have a problem with him other than that. Other than the fact that the nunchucks aren't really that great. <coughs> um, oof, this is a tough one. Hmm. Uh, I do like Spirit Tracker. All right. In third place, I'm going to put Mutton Junkyard. Uh, love, love Junkyard. He's really cool. We have seen this before, though. We've seen, I mean, I love the fact that we're getting the doggo, but we have seen an awesome Jaguar before in Guinevere from the Dungeons and Dragons wave. So we're kind of, we're kind of um, repeating that a little bit. And we also had Timber. But very cool. Well, I, was, I like the fact that we're getting these animal figures from Hasbro. They're doing a good job with them. They made that Timber so that they could make more. Uh, so he's really cool. And Mutt, I like his accessories. I like the way he's executed. His vest is dope. The fact that he has his... Um, his muzzle is really cool. He's got his nightstick and all that. Um, yeah, he's he's cool. I do wish that this combo had a leash. I do not know why they don't have a leash. It seems very strange. Let me check the back of the box again. I'm not seeing a leash on him. So, whatever. Maybe that's like a modern thing where they don't use leashes for those dogs. So, that's really the only drawback that I would say. It doesn't have anything to do with this placement. Um, and then we got a decision to make here. Do we like the Doc Ock or the Spirit Tracker more? Hmm. This is tough. What do you guys think in the chat? Doc Ock or Spirit Tracker for top spots? All right, let's talk it out. Let's see. Um, I think that these tentacles are awesomely executed. What else do you need from him? Let's see, then track. No. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm feeling that way too. All right, let's let's talk about Spear Tracker. All right, so talking about Spear Tracker, 
He has great accessories. I do not, for the life of me, understand how to holster everything. I also am not a huge fan of bows and arrows. Um, I mean, certain characters, you got to have bows and arrows for it. They end up looking cool. But doing the whole lining the arms up and all that stuff is always kind of a pain in the ass. His masks are awesome. His neon green mask, we have it on there right now, and it's okay. But it does want to come off. <coughs> um, if you bend his head down, those masks will come off like we talked about earlier. I do love the fact that we can put the other mask on his shoulder. You might want a little putty or something to get that permanently there if you're going to leave that there. Um, but other than that, yeah, really cool um, accessories. Love the paint scheme. My kind of figure for sure. I'll put him at number two. And then Doc Ock. I think Doc Ock is going to win this one. Because they did, we went from not getting any bendy wire tentacles to getting like the most bendy wire tentacles. These things are like freaking HDMI cables that you can articulate into place. <coughs> that is what they are. So they look good. Uh, extra hands across the board. The face sculpt is decent. It is not a perfect Alfred Molina face sculpt by any means, but it is fairly well executed. Um, and I think that they just nailed the tentacles. The fact that I'm able to have him chilling right here. I'm not worried about him falling over. Any of these other figures will fall over before he is in the setup. <clears throat> so I'm going to put Doc Ock at number one. Love him. Um, for the night. For our reviewed figures. But a great crop of figures here. Like we all... we Avi, I am jealous. Even though I have access to these figures if I want them. I am jealous of you, the fact that you get to immediately put them on display and everything. So, <laughs> that is your overview of all them guys. So, thanks everybody for watching. Feel free to follow up on the YouTube. Remember, we did multicast this to YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna be chopping up the edited review part and re-uploading that as well. So if you want to watch a shorter view version of these reviews, or if you came in late and want to re-watch stuff, all this stuff is available on YouTube. Give us a follow on YouTube at Jobus Palace and across all other socials. Um, and of course, follow us on Whatnot, bookmark upcoming streams. We have over 600 items available. Uh, yeah, so just let me know what you guys are after in general, and that's the deal. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you guys. Peace out.